What's going on everyone? TM24 here and we are back with some more Marvel Snap content. Today we have a patch. So we're just going to run through this patch, kind of take a first look and get a reaction on uh, how we feel this patch is going to play out, what they did to some of the cards, and just really um, take a deep dive into it. But before we do, please take a moment, go hit that subscribe button for me as it really does help. But for now, let's take a look at this patch. So as you can see, this patch came out today. Um, we have updated, so we kind of know what's going on. We took a quick glance at this, but let's kind of run through it right now. So uh, more tokens uh, to players who have not finished Series 3 will now earn four, time, four times more tokens than before. That seems awesome. Uh, shop update. Cards now be acquired from the shop in two different sections. Choose your cards. Series 3 cards have been separated in their own shop section. That seems pretty cool. Instead of purchasing one Series 3 card a month of tokens, players can now choose one Series 3 card to unlock each month for free. Oh, that seems amazing. Wow. Um, like I said, I skimmed through this, so I didn't see that before. That is, that's awesome. So save those tokens for Series 4 and Series 5. This completely changes the token shop. Uh, you know, initially, I was buying all the Series 3 cards that I could get my hands on uh, to kind of get through Series 3. And, I, you know, some of those Series 3 cards had huge impacts on the way you played the game, especially early on. So um, this seems really, really cool. Um, the Token Shop. The Token Shop now contains only Series 4, 5, and Ultimate variants. That seems pretty cool. Uh, general updates. Seasonal Series drops. Some cards have been dropped to a lower Series. So cards dropping from 5 to 4. Zabu, Sor uh, Sauron, Shana, Dazzler, Shadow King. Okay, that, that, seems, that seems fine. And then 4 to 3, Hembaku, Orca, and Atuma. Not really too much, nothing too crazy there. I think the biggest is maybe Zabu dropping down for people that don't have him yet. That seems like a, a pretty nice card that you'll want to pick up. Other than that, I don't see too much that really, uh, you know, moves the needle here. Uh, so when you tap on a card for more details during a match, the big card detail screen now features artist credits and card mods. Okay, that seems pretty cool. Uh, audio. New card sounds for Thanos, Nimrod, Master Mold, Negasonic, Teenage Warhead. New location sounds for Morag, Bar Sinister, Art and Visual Effects. The Almighty Thanos now has a VFX along with all the Infinity Stone. Okay, cool. Balance updates. Let's see what they got to say here. The unscheduled changes to Zabu and Silver Surfer made the metagame shift for the last month more difficult for us to predict. And we weren't able to make timely adjustments for technical reasons. Okay. In that time, Thanos became one of the most dominant decks yet. I, yeah, he seemed really good. Uh, he was actually one of the decks that I used to climb uh, to Infinite. I'll kind of link that deck here as well. Um, his weak matchups versus Zabu and Surfer had really been holding the Mad Titan back. Yeah, I could see that. Shuri based decks were another big winner here, and both of these archetypes have exceeded our tolerances for game balance. Okay, so they're saying that um, they're too good. Shuri based decks and Thanos decks are too good. This patch adjustment adjustments are aimed at restoring order and weakening both of them okay a little sad to see that but uh let's you know we'll see what they do uh we're continuing to explore updates and improvements to both our balance technology and our philosophy around scheduling changes and we look forward to sharing that with you soon okay so more to come uh definitely definitely interesting um and here is kind of the first first update here so we've got thanos and we've got the space zone so thanos is going from 611 to 610 i don't really see how that does a whole lot we increased thanos powers in the previous patch that was built during a time when zabu and silver surfer were suppressing the success of thanos based decks we're happy to keep that nine power for shang chi's sake okay that makes sense still keeping him in shang chi's range but given his recent success we thought it appropriate to pull back on that buff just a touch um, won't dramatically impact the success of Thanos decks as most of the strength is in the stones. I mean, spot on there. I think taking away one power isn't really going to do a whole lot. A lot of the times, you know, he wasn't even his buffed version and 10 versus 11 doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, space stone on reveal next turn. You can move one card at this location. Okay. That was the old one. I've got the graphic, uh, right here as well. And then we are changing to on reveal next year and you can move one card to this location draw a card this is among the strongest stones in thanos decks due to its ability to create bonus lockjaw triggers yeah huge um i anytime you had that space stone and lockjaw you were chucking it on there seeing what came out and moving things around so i think that's huge um this change reduces the eff eff efficacy 
with Lockjaw by removing the incentive to play Space Stone itself for Lockjaw to trigger. Yeah, for sure. Um, because now you don't want to move things to that Lockjaw location. Flattening the number of bonus trigger opportunities for Lockjaw and restricting the strategic options for late game movement. We expect this to reduce the tactical flexibility of Thanos decks and make them more fun to play against. So uh, definitely making it easier uh, to play against Thanos. He doesn't have the same flexibility. I think this is a great change. I think this definitely nerfs the deck without completely killing it. I think Thanos will still be good. But as it, you know, they said here, I think they kind of nailed it. Um, taking away the ability to have extra lockjaw triggers or moving lockjaw yourself i mean i think this is a great change doesn't kill the deck but definitely will slow it down um next up i think we've got uh red skull and quinjet um so we'll take a look at those right now so quinjet now reduces cost to a minimum of one cost reduction is powerful and quinjet was one of the very few cards capable of reducing multiple cards energy to zero while we've enjoyed this interaction in some cases such as the hood's demon Ultimately, it creates both an ongoing risk for future design space as well as fueling the dominant Thanos decks of today. This change should be a meaningful net reduction in the strength of Thanos decks across the board. Again, I think they, they hit on it. Um, I played plenty of games where turn three I was playing Lockjaw plus three stones because I had Quinjet out there. So again, I think this is another huge change. I think this is a good change. Definitely slows Thanos down. Stinks a little bit, you know, because I'm one that enjoys the deck, but definitely needed. Um, next up, we got Red Skull. 515 ongoing enemy cards at this location have plus two power. Going to a 513 uh, ongoing enemy cards at this location have plus one power. This change is singularly aimed at reducing the strength of combining Red Skull with Shuri and Taskmaster. Outside of those interactions, this change is mostly a buff to the base card usage for red skull giving you a nine or ten power at crowded locations rather than a seven or nine um, so they're taking away two power because 530 is too much as opposed to um you know 526 when you include shuri i can see that um 26 definitely seems a lot easier to handle than 30 it may not be like a huge change. It may not be directly nerfing Shuri, but uh, th that four power is that's going to be the difference between winning some games and losing some games. So again, I think they kind of nailed this change. Um, next up, we have uh, well, actually, let's talk about the plus two to plus one. Uh, I think they nailed it again. I mean, now he he's he's better because, like they said, it could have been set you know seven power nine power versus nine or ten now i i do i think that's better giving them only plus one so i think overall this is a good change for red skull he might even be more playable just on his own as a 513 on an empty location so we'll see how it plays out but overall i think that's a pretty good change for red skull uh she hulk 610 going to a 69 is a key component in the strongest shuri decks but it sees wide widespread play in various decks thanks to its strength alongside Sunspot, Wave, and Moon Girl. We mostly think that's cool, but that she's uh, more powerful than she needs to be for those combos. In Explosive Turn 6, we're continuing to weaken a few of the best cards for the ladder. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk about this. They're taking one power away from She-Hulk because she's too good. Um, want to encourage playing actively to locations rather than holding cards for explosive turn six so they they're not liking the turn six dumps they'd rather see a little bit more play on curve making her a six nine puts her closer to even some four drops like warpath or uh, rescue so definitely seems like an okay nerf i don't know if she was really a big problem i didn't you know, when I was losing games to She-Hulk or winning them with her, I, I don't think she was the main culprit. She was always nice to get down. Um, definitely with Shuri and Taskmaster dropping her on turn six. That was huge, of course. But overall, I, I don't think she was a problem. This nerf, it feels okay to me. Um, I, I don't think it's... I don't think she necessarily needed it, but I can see what they're doing. They're, they're trying to slow down those styles of decks. So that makes sense to me. Uh, next up, we got Arrow. 5-7, Honor Reveal. Move all enemy cards played this turn to this location. 
She's getting uh, one more power, 5-8. On reveal, move the last enemy card played this turn to this location. Arrow is a tricky card for us. The actual game balance for Arrow has been healthy, and she fulfills a vital role in our game by providing interaction, especially against dangerously polarizing cards like Galactus. True. Spot on. She's a great counter to Galactus. Um, it's important for Arrow to be versatile and strong in order to be widely playable tech card, but we don't want her pushing the majority of other five-cost cards out of decks. I mean, she was, right? She was the best five-card, uh, five-drop card in the game, so... You know, a lot of the times, depending on your deck, she almost felt like an auto-include because of how good she is. Um, unfortunately, that's the behavior we're seeing. I can totally get that. Arrow can also be frustrating to see, denying players the option to play their own end games. Of course, you know, pulling all their stuff to the lane that they're already winning. You know, it was its own win condition there. So just getting ahead and then staying ahead because of Arrow, definitely, uh, I can definitely see that. Um, this change seeks to keep Arrow strong where she's needed, foster more competition among five cost cards, and add counterplay to make her more fun to play against. So now all you got to do is play something after whatever card you're playing. So, I mean, maybe you're maybe you're running a zero cost lost in your deck just so that that's all Arrow can grab. Um, you know, I don't know if it's actually that extreme. I do think this is a pretty big nerf to Arrow. I do think she's going to see a lot less gameplay i still think she's going to be she's going to be strong but if we're now leaning towards playing multiple cards on a turn it's she's a lot less strong um this is tough because i think arrow i mean if you're if you're playing the game you know arrow is always an option and you know that she can completely ruin your end game plan so sometimes you got to plan for that maybe you're already filling a location that they want to uh pull you to I don't know. I, I feel like this is really, really going to hurt Arrow. I thought she was in a good spot, but obviously she did need a change. She was just kind of too strong. So um, we'll see how it plays out. I don't know if I'm a fan of this this nerf yet. We'll have to test her a little bit and see how it goes. Um, let's kind of look at some of the other comments here. Uh, Mystique, Absorbing Man, and Taskmaster. These cards now require the previous card to be in play in order to copy its attributes uh attributes here are the updated templates okay those are just the new way it's going to be read i think this totally makes sense you want the card that's in play um you want the card in play for them to actually copy it so you know you you drop your your red skull and then uh you know your opponent has priority they take it out now all of a sudden their taskmaster isn't copying it because it no longer exists I think this is a pretty good adjustment. Let's actually see what the developer said. Uh, this adjustment is in part is a part balance, part matching expectations. A meaningful chunk of Taskmaster strength in Shuri's deck is its ability to copy a card's power, even if it's been destroyed by Shang Chi or similar. Okay, that's exactly what we were talking about. Um, an interaction that somewhat often gets reported as a bug. Hopefully, this change weakens Shuri's deck slightly. And more cleanly matches players' intuition when they see these cards for the first time. Totally, totally get it. Makes sense. Um, I, I think it's a good change too. I, I, I mean, honestly, it I, it's as simple as that. It makes sense. You want it to copy something that's actually around. Um, otherwise, how can it copy the power of a card that's been destroyed? So, I feel like that's a, a nice, consistent change. Uh, next up, we got Morbius. Power no longer updates in hand or in deck, only at a location. We previously, uh, previously adjusted Morbius' power to update when he wasn't in play to simplify calculating his future power. However, this has proven a bit confusing in comparison to similar cards and also unnecessary given Morbius is often played very early in the game and isn't very hard to calculate. We're reverting this change, but we expect to add future functionality to Morbius and all cards with ongoing buffs to their own power that communicates their power in order to make these cards simpler to play try to make the game easier to understand morbius is typically played very early on in the game so i think this is you know a fine change nothing too you know nothing too crazy uh no no power still updates in hand but no longer in deck the future improvements discussed above will also apply to no but until we make them uh, he will continue to function differently relative to Devil Dinosaur and others. 
The reason for this is that it's important for null players to be able to quickly and precisely calculate his power while making endgame decisions about their 6 cost card. As a placeholder adjustment, null will no longer update his power in your deck, so his functionality with Mr. Negative will be the same as his fellow ongoing cards. Notably, he will use his potential power for effects like the peak location until we're able to make our desired improvement. That's a trade we've decided to accept for improving the general use cases of Null. All right. So, Null's power is only updated in your hand, not in your deck. So, as they said with Mr. Negative, that's almost a buff to him because Null is now, if, if you know, if he gets gets hit by mr negative it's going to be a zero cost with a whole mountain of power plus the six power for its cost i think this is a uh a pretty good pretty good buff here well pretty good change let's call it that um it is kind of a buff though in that you know it now functions a little bit different i think this is a good change i think it, it does increase the power of um mr negative indirectly a little bit but overall i think it's fine uh widow's bite text only when this is in your hand cards in your deck cannot be drawn while this is in your hand you can't draw cards widow's bite inaccurately described its in-game effect while we considered updating the effect of widow's bite to only prevent drawing your own cards and effects like cable from drawing your cards we ultimately decided it was better experience to just simplify the text and keep the current effect rather than create these edge cases so just a text change i you know not something i honestly would have even noticed or really cared about it looks like they've got a bunch of bug fixes down um i'll kind of leave this up for a hot second and scroll so that if anyone wants to see it they can stop and look um they've also got some other known issues can crash on and android i i actually play on android and then a bunch of other uh issues here but that seems to be the end of it um, kind of looking at some of these these changes again, these uh, nerfs, these balance updates. The power to Thanos, not not a huge deal. I think the Space Stone one is pretty big. Uh, definitely decreases flexibility in that deck. I think it's a good change, though, one that was probably needed because the deck was too strong. Quinjet, I mean, that seems fair. That seems fine. It's you know almost every other card got you down to one but you couldn't get below it so a little bit more consistency there change the red skull i think it's actually good for red skull on its own obviously hurts a little bit with shuri she hulk i mean i i don't i don't think she really needed to be changed but i guess i understand why taking one power away is fine you know no big deal i think she'll still be played pretty much the same i am not sure how this change the arrow is going to play out um, I do think it's a pretty big change, so uh, I am interested to see, but um, that's going to kind of wrap up the nerfs and things that we saw here. If y'all got any comments or anything like that, please feel free to leave them below, but uh, for now, we're going to go test out some of these cards, so until next time, have some fun.